Welcome to KJV Home Bible Study from the Man Cave. This is JC Legar with Chloe Legar, and today we're going to continue with the Gospel of Matthew. This will be part 77. But Chloe Legar, before I do anything, what do I need to do? Pray. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, thank you, Lord, that your mercies are new every single morning. And Father, regardless of how bad we may blow it, your mercies are there for us. If you'd allow us to wake up, it's because your grace and your mercy are ready for us. So Father, if we fail, we come before you, we confess our sin, and you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Father, after that, we can come before you and say, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit and allow me, God, to be able to serve you in any way that you call me to do. Father, I pray you will bless this time in your word. It's in Jesus' name I pray, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. Let's do this. We are in Matthew 12, 33 through 38. Either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. O generation of vipers! How can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Then certain of the scribes and the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. All right. So Jesus here is comparing humans to trees. And we're going to see in some Bible verses how the Bible also equates humanity with trees. And a tree is known by their fruit. They're either an apple tree, orange, pear, you name it. And you taste the fruit, and if it tastes good, it's a good tree. But if you bite into it, and it's rotten, and there's worms all in it, you're like, ah, gross, it's an evil tree, and you just spit that out. So let's look at some Bible verses, shall we? In Psalm 1, in my humble opinion, this is speaking about the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Starting in verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. So I know no human who is like that, day and night always delighting in the law of the Lord and meditating on it. Only Jesus could fulfill this. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft, which the wind driveth away. 
Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the God ungodly shall perish. All right, let's look in Matthew for another description of trees. In verse 10, John the Baptist is saying, And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. And in 7... Seventeen. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? Where? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. See, not everybody that goes to church is a Christian. Many people that go to church, they're good people, or we think they are. Again, we look at the fruit, and we pluck it, we bite into it, and it's rotten, it's full of worms. It's like, I thought you were a good tree. You're planted in a church. What's the deal? Blech. And again, one day Jesus is going to say to those who went to church their whole life but never got saved, I never knew you. Not that I knew you for a little bit, then you fell away. I never knew you. That's scary. Alright, now we're going to see Jesus doing something really, really, really funny here. Jesus ate... 22 I'm sorry Mark 8:22 And he cometh to Bethsaida and they bring a blind man unto him and besought him to touch him and he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town and when he had spit on his eyes <laughs> <laughs> That's our Jesus for you. And put his hands upon him. He asked him if he saw aught. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. After that he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up. And he was restored and saw every man clearly. And he sent him away to his house, saying, Neither go into the town, nor tell it to any in the town. So, pretty much, again, Jesus is healing in a way that you're going, Huh? He's like, right in his eye. <laughs> it's like, he can just, like, touch the guy, and he could heal him, but... Or, like he did to the other guy, he made clay and anointed that night. Pooey! <laughs> okay, Lord! <laughs> That's your deal. You do what you want. <laughs> Alright, Proverb 3, 13. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom. 
and the man that getteth understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is everyone that retaineth her. So again, here we got wisdom that is as a tree. And in Proverbs 11.30 The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. So one of the things as a Christian, if you are from a good tree, the fruit you're going to bear is that of a soul winner. You will purpose yourself with sharing your faith. Again, you cannot save anyone, but you give people the opportunity to make that choice. You present them Jesus, and you say, taste and see that the Lord is good. And if they got a hunger in their heart, they're gonna seek and find the Lord, and they're gonna taste, and they're gonna go, Wow, Jesus is good for my soul. And our last verse is Matthew again in 15. 15, 16. Uh, let's look at that verse again right here. A good man out of the treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. So let's see what's in the heart of men here. It's not anything to brag about. And Jesus said, Are ye also yet without understanding? Do not ye yet understand? that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goes into the belly and is cast out into the draught. But those things which proceed out of the heart come forth from the heart, or I'm sorry, out of the mouth comes forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornication, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashing hands defileth not a man. Still a good idea to wash your hands before every meal, though. Mm -hmm. And just real quick, this verse freaks me out at the very thought of it. But I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Think about that. See, when I pray, I never wonder, God, are you listening? Because if God is going to record every idle word that an unsaved man says, so that they have to give an account thereof in the day of judgment, then I know that when I pray, my Heavenly Father is paying attention to every word that I speak. It goes into His ears. Now, if I'm living in sin, I can pray all day, and it'll go in His ears, but God will say, I'm not going to necessarily answer you and bless what you're asking me to bless. You need to be right with me first. Confess your sins, repent, and then I will hear your prayer and bless you. 
But if you're an unsaved man, think about that. You're going to stand before a holy God one day and have to give an account of every idle word spoken. And God not only is going to give an account of your words, you're going to have to give an account of your thoughts, of your actions, and those things that you knew to be right and you didn't do. Wow, God is going to be very, very thorough. He made this statement about himself. In Matthew, he called himself a rock. All those who fall upon him will be broken, but those that he falls upon, he will grind them to powder. Now, when you grind something to powder, you do a thorough job. So when you stand before God on Judgment Day, again, think about that. Every idle word you're going to have to give an account thereof. My friends, I want to implore you, come to God, confess your sins to Him, believe on the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's your only hope, because if God is going to give every word that you've spoken into judgment, man, that's heavy duty. So I implore you again, come to Jesus, confess your sins, believe on him, receive forgiveness, be a child of God, so you will face God not as your judge, but as your father. This is JC Ligar with Chloe Ligar. I hope you'll join us next time for the Gospel of Matthew. God bless you, everybody. Bye-bye.